Dear young people of Holy Trinity, this Holy Week is a very different is very different since we are not gathering in the church building. But guess what? You are the church. You are Holy Trinity. So even though we are not physically together, we are spiritually together with each other. Unfortunately, we will not have the Good Friday retreat as we normally do. However, the Goyans have worked extra hard to make a virtual Good Friday retreat. So look at the instructions and follow the videos in order provided. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Goyans who uh, participated in the retreat. Luca Hoffman, Elizabeth Maltezos, Athena Gasper, Brandon Deneve, Philip Klein, Paolo Hytopoulos, and Kira Ferillis. God bless all of you. I miss you, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thanks for watching, and once again, thank you, Goyans, and thank you, Mr. Michael Wade, for making this virtual retreat possible. And by the way, for an activity, why don't you make a cavucleon, the epitaphios, out of cardboard, styrofoam, paper, decorate it, and put it by your monitor, and when we are singing the lamentations and you're holding your candle, you could be a part of it as well. Have a wonderful rest of Holy Week, and God bless you. It had not been an easy time in Jerusalem, and things went from bad to worse by the hour. From the moment Christ died on the cross, the earth turned dark as if the sun had gone away, and the hearts became as depressed as the sky. What has happened? Everyone asked themselves. This man they had crucified had worked miracles. He had brought people back from the dead, but he could not save himself. He was supposed to be a king and change the world forever, but he died like a criminal. What went wrong? Was it all a joke? This man who died on the cross was gone forever, and all hopes of his followers died. But Jesus didn't have a tomb. His only belongings were the clothes on his back, and after he died, the soldiers gambled to his garments. Then a rich man, who knew Jesus and considered him a friend, went to Pilate and asked if he could have Jesus' body. Pilate agreed, and this friend wrapped Jesus' body in a white clean sheet and had him placed in the tomb that he had just purchased for himself. Then he rolled a big stone over the opening. Pilate had the stone sealed to the tomb and placed guards on it so no one could seal the body of Jesus. Then it was over. This man, whom they had put so much faith, was gone, and they felt cheated. They wanted to believe all the wonderful he had taught them, but they had no heart for it. Jesus was dead. He was just a man after all, and all their hopes for a new and better world were gone. Nothing could bring them back. All that night and in the day that followed, it was as if the world had lost heart when they lost their savior. People ached from confusion and disappointment. Until the very last minute, they believed that Jesus would turn a miracle and save himself, but it never happened. Before he died, he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not only had they lost their Lord, all their hopes and dreams died with him, and they were confused and frightened. Grief mingled with disillusionment. They had not only lost a friend, they had lost all their hopes for the things that Jesus taught them about love, eternity, and life after death. The believers had lost so much they wondered how they could bear it. A lot of things happened that made the situation worse. When the soldiers took Jesus away, Peter was frightened. He knew that he and the other disciples could be in as much danger as Jesus. When a woman asked, didn't I see you with Jesus? Peter shook his head. I don't even know him, Peter said. Later, someone else said, aren't you one of them? I am not, Peter said. Then the others pointed their fingers and cried, you are one of them. I know it. When Peter denied it a third time, a rooster crowed. It reminded Peter of what Jesus said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter was so ashamed and humiliated that he covered his face with his hands and cried real hard. Judas, who thought Jesus would save himself and show the world his power, realized what a horrible mistake that he had made. For 30 pieces of silver, he had betrayed the Lord and was responsible for his death. Judas could not bear the guilt of what he had done and hung himself. People shuddered, as Ray remembered the sign that had been placed over Jesus' head as he hung on the cross, as if to make fun of him and all that he stood for. The sign said, 
This is Jesus, King of the Jews. In all the confusion and disappointment, people did not know what to think, what to believe, or even what to pray for. All was lost. They felt as if they had been robbed, not only for the truths they treasured, but of everything that brought meaning to them. The grief was so heavy, they thought nothing could drive it away. Sunday morning, with hearts still sad and heavy, Mary Magdalene and another Mary rose early and walked to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid to rest. But to their shock and confusion, the stone that covered the tomb had been rolled away. It stood open. Then they could not believe their eyes. An angel stood inside the tomb and gave off light in every direction, almost like lightning, and his garments were very white. The women could hardly see because it was so bright. The gods were so frightened they could not move and stood like dead men. The angel smiled at the women and said, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for the Jesus who had been crucified, but he is not here. He is risen. Just like he said, Jesus has risen from the dead. Then the angel told the women to go and find the disciples and tell them that Jesus had risen. With their hearts bouncing with joy, they ran to find the disciples to tell them what had happened. But suddenly a figure appeared before them and said, Peace be with you. The women were overwhelmed and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Jesus knew what they were afraid and in awe and said, do not be afraid. Go and tell the disciples to go to Galilee, and I will meet them there. The women raced on, knowing in their hearts that the news that they would carry would change the world forever. Christ is risen from the dead. Everything Jesus said was true, and no armies, kings, or leaders could change what had happened. Christ is risen from the dead. Heaven and eternal life, which he talked about, were true. Christ is risen, and his message of peace, love, and joy would live forever.